I started quilling in 2006. My first quilling paper came from the book Twirled Paper by Klutz. Each time I finished quilling, I'd carefully gather the strips and place it back into the packaging. But sometimes I'd be in a hurry. So I started to use a shoebox, which was good for half-made pieces, leftover strips, but then sometimes I'd accidentally crimp the paper. When I finally ran out of a color, I bought more paper, and of course things got complicated. In 2010, I decided to pin my paper to some foam core. I liked how the paper was straighter, and I could find any color I wanted, and have immediate access. But then we moved and I had a smaller room, so I couldn't lie my board flat. I realized when I had to store the board vertically, the weight of gravity would end up making the paper split apart. In 2014, we moved again and I had more space. I bought an Ikea shelf off Craigslist and made a foam core box customized to fit my drawer. I made trays with dividing channels in between the colors with notches to make it easy to lift each tray out. It was meant to be like the corkboard method, but without the pins. The foam core was the perfect height for protection against accidental crimping. I liked how I could set the box on the open drawer and make it behave like a table, and it didn't need space on my desk. But it was a huge hassle to access the trays below. In the end, my foam core organizer looks nice and works in theory, but in reality, as I reach for a strip, it would jump out of the channel, so I wrapped paper bands around them to keep them tame. Then I even used removable tape across the channels to keep them all fenced in. It worked okay, but I didn't love it. This is also when I started to use a binder for the leftover strips. I like this method because I could see the exact leftover bit that I could use up. I could also combine the similar colors together, and the binder is very condensed, so it's great for travel, especially if you're just traveling to your kitchen table or couch. In a previous video, I showed you how I organized my 11-inch quilling strips with a plastic sleeve, and I'll leave a link below if you'd like to see that. Ever since making this method, I have not wanted a different method. I love how I can put them all in a binder or in a container on my desk to reach for any color. This really suits the thicker paper I like using for quilling letters, which is Canson Miton. Since the plastic sheet organizers were so perfect for storing my short strips, I was happy to find a large format or 11 by 17 inches sheet as well. The conventional quilling paper I have in my craft room are between 18 to 24 inches long, depending on the brand. I needed to extend the plastic sleeve a bit to make sure the ends don't flop around, so I cut another plastic sheet into thirds and added it on the right. The plastic sheets are very thin, so it takes up less space in the drawer. I can stack several layers on top of each other in my drawer and reach for a specific sheet even if it's on the bottom. I've divided most sheets into 12 rows. I grouped colors into warm, cool, multicolor, and wider or thicker strips. The wider, thicker strips obviously needed more room, so there's less rows on this sheet. The clear plastic lets me find any color and check the width by turning the strips. I plan to use washi tape to remember the brand name and color. It's easiest to slide the paper in from the left because the top piece of plastic is shorter than the plastic on the bottom. As I slide the papers in, the rows help me tame the strips with a few taps. To detach a strip, pull the paper out slightly on the left and detach on this side. Then detach the other side and slide the single strip out. The rest stays put. The longer the paper has been stored in these rows, the straighter they've become. Cons or concerns? Now that I've shown you what I love about this new way of organizing, I'll explain some of the cons or concerns that I have using this method so far. To figure out the row width, all I did was slide some paper in and pinch the plastic to see how much friction was there when I slid it back and forth. As you use up your paper, it won't have as much friction because there's more room. When this happens, the paper can skew diagonally. Other than the paper being a loose fit within the row, it doesn't seem too bad. A loose fit in the row could result in sliding out of the plastic sheet due to its own weight. 
so I do need to remember to keep the sheet level as I handle it. You can put some smaller quantities together to bulk it back up. Here I've put several single strips together and as I pull on one strip, the rest seems to stay in place. I haven't been using it long enough really to know if this is a nuisance, but so far it seems okay. I showed you how to detach a strip from a single color package of paper, but what if you want a color in the middle of a multicolor pack? I do find I need to pull the paper out more so I can get access to the color I need. I would say it's easier to detach paper from a pack that's all the same color versus one that's a multicolor pack, but when you can't decide on a single color, what are you going to do? If you do choose to use this method to store your quilling strips, another tip is to feed the paper in the channel by gripping close to the plastic, not way out here where the paper can escape. Since the pros greatly outweigh the cons, so far I'm pretty happy with this method compared to my previous organizers. Please let me know what you think of this idea in the comments below. Giving me your feedback lets me know if these tutorials are helpful, and it just keeps me motivated. If you have a quilling storage hack, please share it in the comments below so we can all learn from you too. Here are the materials that you'll need to make this quilling paper strip organizer. Download my free PDF template. You'll also need some sheet protectors. This is large format or 11 by 17. Now just note that there are two versions. There's a side loading and top loading. Let me just show you what side loading looks like. You see here, we're loading from the side, okay? We don't want the one that's top loading from above. You'll also need a scoring tool such as a dried up pen and removable tape such as scotch removable tape or I'm using washi tape and I'm also using a large ruler and the one I'm using is 24 inches long and lastly you'll need a sewing machine. Step 1. Trim the right end off to create a tube. Step 2. If your paper is long like mine you may prefer to extend the length. Cut another sheet into thirds. This will extend your sheet by about five and a half inches wide. Since the first sheet and the extension are the same size, we need to tuck them into one another to force it to overlap. Snip diagonal corners off your first protector on the left about a quarter inch and at about 45 degree angle. Step 4. Tuck the snipped edge into the extension and tape it in place on both sides. It's important to tuck the left side inside not outside. If you tuck it outside, as you slide your paper into the row, it can snag against this edge. Step 5. After you download my template, you'll see that I have two options for you to choose from. Page 1 is divided into 12 even rows, which is a little less than an inch high. These rows are then divided again with dotted lines. You can choose to use the dotted lines if you have a smaller grouping of paper, or skip a line if you have much larger groupings of paper. Page 2 is divided into 12 rows as well, but unequally. This allows you to have a mix between larger multicolor packs and smaller single color packs. After printing out the templates, you can simply lay your packs of paper on top and see which one suits your stash best. After choosing your template, cut it vertically in half. Step 6. Slip the template halves on either side of the sheet protector. Step 7. Use a ruler and scoring tool to trace along the template, leaving an indentation in the plastic. Step 8. Remove the template and sew along the score lines. Now you're ready to tidy up your supplies.